Hello and welcome to Dining with Death, where we discuss infamous cases of death and murder that have an element of food to them, and then I cook or sample the food from the case. I'm Stacy Lee. Let's begin. This isn't going to be a fun episode today, and to be honest with you, I thought twice about covering this story in light of recent events. But then it dawned on me, if I don't cover this story now, I'll just be covering it after the next mass shooting. I firmly believe that we have to keep talking about this problem if we're going to find a solution. And even though I'm sure YouTube is going to demonetize this video, I'm going to cover the story anyway. We have a very serious problem in this country, and I'm sick of people politicizing it. There are guns in every country, and there is mental illness in every country. There are not mass shootings in every country. So why is it happening here every week? This is a uniquely American problem, and it doesn't matter what side of the political spectrum you fall on, you cannot turn away from it. We have got to do something better than what we're doing right now. We have got to do something different. And the only thing I know to do is to talk about it and discuss it. The more people talking about this, the more chances we have of someone coming up with some solutions. If you don't care about this and you don't realize what a problem it is, you must not have little kids in school. Because I can tell you I think about this every day. I think about this every time someone I love goes to the movie theater and I'm sick of thinking about this. Mass shootings are a weekly event in America now. As of the day I'm writing this, there have been 248 mass shootings from January 1st, 2020 to the first week of June. I'm a gun owner. I believe people should be allowed to own a gun if they want. I also firmly not only support stronger gun ownership legislation, but believe if we do not reform the way guns are bought, sold, and transferred in America, there is something very wrong with us. It hasn't always been this way. Mass shootings used to be very rare. You hardly ever heard about them. And when they did happen, they were big news. I was 14 years old when this one happened, and even without cable TV, 24-hour news, or the internet, I knew about this. I remember being scared to go into a McDonald's for a while after this happened. I remember thinking about it whenever I did go into a McDonald's for a while. For a while, and then I forgot about it. It's a survival mechanism in our brain. We get traumatized over something and then slowly we forget about it because we have to in order to move on. But every once in a while I think about this case and how it changed the way I feel about public places. On July 15th, 1984, a man named James Huberty told his wife Etna that he thought he might be crazy. He said there was something wrong with his brain and two days later he called a mental health clinic in San Diego, close to where he lived, to make an appointment to see a doctor. He left his name and his number and was told that the clinic would call him in an hour or so to confirm that he had an appointment. James Huberty was so concerned about himself that he sat down in a chair and waited for the phone to ring. The call never came. The receptionist wrote James' name down wrong. She didn't label him as a crisis case, and she put him on a list to get a call back in 48 hours. James finally got up from the chair and took a ride on his motorcycle. He came home in a better mood, had dinner with his wife and two daughters, and then they watched a movie. Very interesting that he knew something was wrong. Very interesting that he knew his thinking was off, and he did try to get help, and boy, they screwed the pooch. The next morning, James and his wife took their children to the San Diego Zoo. In the middle of this seemingly nice day together, James told his wife that his life was over. He told his wife that he knew everything was coming to an end, and then he made the comment, well, society had their chance. The family left the zoo and ate lunch together at a McDonald's restaurant and then went home. A short while later, Etna was surprised to see James had changed his clothes. She was laying on their bed and he walked over to her and said, I want to kiss you goodbye. So Etna kissed her husband and said, where are you going? I'm going to make dinner soon. James turned to Etna and said, going hunting, hunting for humans. James, dressed in camouflage pants, slung a gun across his shoulder, grabbed a box of ammunition, which he wrapped in a blanket, and said to his oldest daughter, Zella, goodbye, I won't be back. Now, boy, do I wish I could give you some information on why Etna did nothing. That is a very disturbing story, and I, I don't want to pass judgment, but I, I don't know why nothing was done. James Huberty then got into his black Mercury Marquis sedan and drove out of his neighborhood and onto San Ysidro Boulevard past a Big Bear supermarket, a shopping plaza, and into the nearby McDonald's parking lot just 200 yards from his apartment on Avril Road. It was 4 o'clock in the afternoon 
He got out of the car carrying a 9mm Browning HP semi-automatic pistol, a 9mm Uzi carbine, and a Winchester 1200 12-gauge pump-action shotgun with a cloth bag filled with hundreds of rounds of ammunition for each of the weapons. James walked into the restaurant and aimed his shotgun at 16-year-old John Arnold, who was an employee of McDonald's. The assistant manager, Guillermo Flores, saw this and yelled, Hey John, that guy's going to shoot you. James then pulled the trigger, but nothing happened. He began to inspect the gun as the manager of the restaurant, Neva Kane, walked from behind the counter, thinking this was all a very distasteful joke. James lifted his gun and shot her with the Uzi, killing her. He then fired at Arnold, wounding him in the chest and arm, and then yelled, Everybody on the ground. He started yelling at the restaurant customers, calling them dirty swine and Vietnam assholes. He yelled, I've killed a thousand and I'll kill a thousand more. The details from here get a little graphic and I'm not going to go into all of them because they're very disturbing and even though I'll never make any money on this video, it ain't about that. It's more about not wanting to put straight up horror onto my channel. There are just some things that I don't want to have here. Even though I may read about them or study them in my life, I just don't want them to be a part of what I do here. We all like discussing dark events, but you know, when there's kids involved and when things get really graphic in that regard, I just, I just don't want to go into it. James Huberty goes through the restaurant shooting children, men, sisters, brothers, elderly people, and he doesn't shoot them once. He shoots them over and over and over. That day, people lost their loved ones. They lost children. They lost their parents. They lost their sense of safety and their peace, and they lost their happiness, and it's just horrific. It's unthinkable. I can't tell you how many times I've pictured being in this exact situation, what I'd do, how I'd respond. It's why I don't go to the movie theaters. It's why I hate crowded spaces. It's why I don't perform as a singer as much as I used to. I just don't trust people anymore. And yes, I've thought about this happening to me, to my children, to my parents, to my granddaughters, and it turns my stomach. Someone ran to the post office nearby and called 911. The dispatcher sent the police to the wrong McDonald's. So the shootings went on and on for minute after minute. One woman drove into the parking lot to go through the drive-through. She saw the shattered windows and heard the gunfire. So she threw her car into reverse and crashed into the fence. She then grabbed her two-year-old daughter and hid in the bushes. People passing by heard the shots, but they didn't know exactly where they were coming from. So they kept on walking. All the while people were dying inside the McDonald's just feet away from them. A family of three, two parents and a baby, walked up to the restaurant. All three of them were shot. The baby was permanently blinded in one eye, but all three survived. Three 11-year-old boys rode by the restaurant on their bikes. James Huberty shot them all. One of them survived, two did not. James then shot an elderly couple as they walked into the restaurant. The woman fell to the ground and her husband cradled her head, cursing at James, who then walked up to him and killed him. Finally, police arrived and created a lockdown for six blocks surrounding the restaurant. James began firing at the police cars as the cops took shelter behind them. Within minutes, 175 officers had been deployed and placed in strategic positions around the restaurant. Within an hour, a SWAT team had assembled and taken position outside as well. James found a radio in the service area of the restaurant. He turned on some music and began dancing while shooting wildly. He then discovered more employees hiding in the kitchen. He shot every single one of them. Some survived, some did not. For over an hour, James Huberty caused panic and terror and horror as he ended many lives and changed many others forever. At 5.17, about an hour and 20 minutes after he arrived at the McDonald's, James stepped toward the doorway close to the drive through window of the restaurant. 27-year-old SWAT sniper Charles Foster, positioned across the parking lot, took his opportunity. With an unobstructed view of James Huberty, Foster filed a single round from 35 yards, striking James in the chest, severing his aorta, sending James sprawling backwards onto the floor. He was dead. The shooting lasted 77 minutes. 22 people were dead, including a pregnant woman, and 19 others were injured. James Huberty brought the death toll to 23. As family and friends grieved, investigators began to look into James Huberty's life. What they found will give you chills, more so today than back then. 
James Huberty is literally the blueprint for mass shooters. They all have a lot of things in common, a lot of things in common, and there's no denying that. James was from a devoutly religious family. Fanatical would be a better word. He contracted polio at age three and walked with a limp his entire life because of that. He was teased and bullied because of his limp. His dad bought a farm and his mother hated living there, so she abandoned her family and became a street preacher, standing on the corners of Tucson, Arizona, shouting Pentecostal hellfire and damnation to passerbys. One day, James' father found him sobbing in the chicken coop shortly after his mother left him. James had no friends. He spent all of his time with guns. He hated school. He graduated 51st out of 77 students. He spent every solitary waking moment shooting his guns. He went through tons of ammo, and when he wasn't shooting, he was cleaning his guns or reading gun magazines. James was the very definition of a gun nut. He managed to get into mortuary school and became a funeral director. James then became obsessed with death and the afterlife. He quickly flopped as a funeral director because he was terrible with people. So then he became a welder and he made very good money at that. After James and Etna got married, the police were called on many occasions because he was so abusive with her and abusive to the children. So we've got a kid that was bullied, abandoned by a parent, had an obsession with guns, and was abusive. It's a blueprint. It's a blueprint. What do we do about it? I don't have the answer. We can't turn our country into the minority report, you know, where we assume certain kinds of people are going to predict crimes. That's not right. But what the hell do we do, you guys? We've, we've got to do something. James Huberty became a staunch conspiracy theorist and survivalist. He told people the government was conspiring against him and that the Russians were plotting to kill him and his family. He told everyone he knew that he was ready for them to come get him. And the people that knew him report that wherever James Hubert was sitting, even relaxing in his home, there was a gun within arm's reach. Then he got laid off and moved to Mexico for a while. Then he dragged his family to Ohio, finally to California, all the while claiming his failures were the fault of immigrants, of the government, of anyone and everyone but him. He had gone from earning the equivalent of about $120,000 a year to about $30,000 a year. At his low paying job in San Ysidro, he was fired on July 10th. Eight days later, he committed the massacre. <sighs> I don't know what to say. As I thought about this, I decided the best thing to do was to take a trip to McDonald's, take you guys along with me, and talk about this as we go through this very mundane experience that millions of people go through every day going to McDonald's. I'm going to talk a little bit as you guys come to lunch with me and then I hope that you'll talk about this in the comments. I just drove here to my local McDonald's. We have, I don't know, maybe three or four of these in town. Uh, this one's on South Bluff. Just, you know, how many millions of people do this every day? It's such a common thing to go grab a burger somewhere. We don't give it a second thought. And that's why I thought this might be the best way to explore this. It's just an everyday mundane task, really, you know, to get food quickly. Um, I don't know, where would you go? There's, you've got the kitchen, you know, there's this little uh, kind of side entrance there by the cash registers. So you've got basically that door and then the door that I came in, which is to my right from this shot. You've got the little soda fountain area. It's not very big. There's a couple of little seats in this little enclosure. And then behind that is kind of the main dining room that again is not very big and just dead ends. They've now installed these, I don't know what are kiosks that you can use if you don't want to, um, use a live person but you know you get your food you walk to the back of the restaurant if you're staying and not eating in your car you know I mean it's really quite small most of the McDonald's now aren't very big you can see that back wall just dead ends right there there's nowhere to go you know it's I don't know what are there 12 tables 14 tables here maybe it's I don't know I don't know it's just kind of depressing to me to think about it but I mean, where would you run if you were right here? You know, you've got that little 
kind of inlet there to the bathrooms, but those bathrooms don't have an outlet in them. They're, you just run in the bathroom and hide, and then you're just a sitting duck. You've got a corner over there. If somebody were to walk in that door right there, if those people were to walk in right now and start shooting, I'd be dead. There'd be nowhere for me to go. I mean, look, there's just that door I'm sure is locked. It's employees only. I'd just be trapped here, you know? It's really terrifying. Would you try to run to the bathroom? I mean, do you think that's smart to try to hide in the bathroom? I don't know because they're going to come in there at some point, you know, just a bunch of people just sitting there eating their lunch and they died for that. It's not right. It's upsetting to me. I I could hear the anger in my voice when I was editing this video uh, from the day that I recorded it. And I, I guess I get mad when the subject comes up. It makes me angry that people are allowed to make us feel unsafe. You know, people talk about freedom in America all the time. I don't always feel so free. And a lot of that has to do with gun violence. It's just a really sad event all the way around. Just something to think about, unfortunately. It is something we all have to think about. I sure appreciate you joining me today on Dining with Death. Hit the like button if you liked the video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more from me. It does help. You can also join my Patreon, which is very much appreciated, and you will get some bonus content there. Stay safe and be kind to each other, and I'll see you next time on Dining with Death. Bye.